In the next few tutorial, we'll look at how to make a character move on a grid and do that in a way that will be future-proof, that will allow you to expand upon it. The system works as such. You have a character and it's inside of a grid, just like every obstacle or enemy and all. And the grid is responsible for telling every one of its children whether they can move to another cell, whether there's something on the cell or not. That's a way to make sure that you, you don't have any problems when, for instance, an AI and the player want to move to the same cell. In this video, we'll see how we can make a top-down character movement. You will see that the two are related because moving on a grid is just moving like normal, but you move to a target and you don't go past it. Then we'll look at how to create the grid system that will check where the player is in the world, maintain an array of every one of its children and their position on the game board. And last but not least, we'll connect the player movement to the grid in a third video. I already made a video related to the design of grid-based games in the past. You can go watch it now. That said, let's get started. As always, you can find the project on GitHub in the start folder. So the setup is quite simple. You have a player that's a kinematic body 2D with a script attached and it has a sprite, that green rounded square, just so that we can see where it's moving. Click on the script to access the script itself, which is just a very simple boilerplate. It is set to process at fixed time intervals and that's it. So now we can build the character. We'll need to do a few things. First of all, we need to be able to get the player direction, where the player wants the character to move. So the first variable we'll create at the top of the script is the direction variable. And that will be a vector 2, simply because the character can move both on the x and y axis in a top-down game. A vector 2 is all we need to represent 4 or 8 directions. Then I recommend one thing, it's one thing I like to do, is to create constants for the directions, just so that they are easy to read in the script. To create a constant, you write the const keyword followed by its name. Starting with top, the top direction, it's going to be a vector 2. The top direction is 0 on the x-axis, it's nothing on the x. However, on the y-axis, it's minus 1. That's how you create a unit vector pointing up. Duplicate this line, you copy and paste it, and we're going to create the right, bottom, and the left. So for the right, it's 1 on the x-axis, 0 on the y-axis. Followed by down, or but, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be 0 on the x-axis, 1 on the y-axis. That's a vector pointing down. Next up, we have left, to wrap this up and it's minus one, zero. The advantage of having these vectors is that if we add left and down together, we get the down left direction because each of our vectors just make a difference on a single axis. The next step is to detect the player's input. We have the directions, but they don't do anything for now. And to do that, we can just use the input object dot is action pressed. So in this base project, there are a few actions, inputs defined for you for move right, up, left, and down. If you go to the project settings, input map, you will find them at the bottom. So let's start with move up. I'll just use the same order that I used at the top here. If the player presses the up arrow, we want the character's direction, our direction variable, to be equal to the top direction. Else, if the player is using the right key, is going to the right, we want the direction to be equal to right. And you get the idea for the next two, you can copy and paste and just replace move right with move down for the down direction and for the last one it will be move left. 
The order in which you put those conditions makes a little difference. It defines which key has the last word. For example, if the player is pressing the up key, he won't be able to move right, down or left at the same time. The up key is going to dominate over the others. This input allows us to detect if the player wants the character to move, in which case we will set the character speed to a positive value. This means we have to create a new variable called speed and it will be equal to zero by default. Also, let's create a constant max speed and set it to whatever you want the character speed to be. So let's say 400. Whenever the player inputs a key, we want the character to move, in which case we could write speed equals max speed. There's no acceleration in that case, the character moves instantly. Now we don't want to copy that line four times. So one thing I like to do is to set up a boolean value to check if the player wants the character to move. Let's create that, it will be a local variable. We just want to recheck for the same input, but all inside of that variable. We can uh, create a boolean value by using the operators OR or AND, for instance, and that's what we'll do. So if the player presses the UP key, OR if he presses the RIGHT key, OR if he presses the DOWN key, OR if he presses the LEFT key, he wants the character to move. Note that we don't have to write all of that. We can also create a, a new input in the project setting to just check if the character is moving, but that will be an input that will contain all the keys from the move right, left, down and up arrows. I prefer to do it that way because at least it's a bit clearer. The character is moving if the player presses one of the four possible inputs. So now we can add an extra condition and nest all the input ones inside of it. If the player is moving, then we check where he wants to move. And because we know that one of the four keys were pressed, we can confidently set the speed to max speed. Then if the character is not moving, if there's no input, that frame, we want to set the speed to zero. And believe it or not, for a simple example, we are almost done. We just need to calculate some velocity. If you remember the previous series on the platform game movement, I told you that the velocity is a motion vector. So we have to multiply speed by direction to get the right direction in which we want to send the character, but also by delta, the time interval between two frames. This is the very basics of motion you'd see in Newtonian physics. Last step, we have to move the character using the velocity vector, otherwise nothing is going to happen. And you can try out the game at this stage and move the character in all four directions. The setup is quite similar to the platform game we did before to the horizontal movement. And yes, it's the same principles all the time. The only thing is because of the added directions, when we refine such a movement, when you want to make it a bit more elegant, it's going to add a bit of complexity. All right, let's add a little extra. With simple changes, we can make the character move in eight directions. First of all, we have to group the motion on the horizontal and vertical axes together. So we'll remove the elif on the move left and we'll check if the player is either moving to the left or to the right together. And we'll also check if he's moving up or down. We separate the two axes. We'll reset the direction to zero, to nothing on every frame. And then depending on the input, we will not set the direction, but rather add to it. As I've told you, when we created our vector at the top here, we just set them to be the top direction, the right direction, down and left. If we add those vectors, the right and left are opposite. However, if you add the top and left, because you only add minus one to the X component and minus one to the Y component, you effectively get the top left direction. 
So just changing the equal signs to plus equals. So we add the constants instead of just setting the direction variable to it. We can now test the game and you'll see the character can move in eight directions. There's a little thing there. If we leave the game that way, the character is actually moving faster when it's going diagonal than if it's moving on the X or Y axis only. This is due to the fact that our vector can not only have only one unit on one component, the X or Y axis, but now it can have one unit on the X and the Y axis. If you remember the Pythagorean theorem, the length of the diagonal of the triangle's hypotenuse is the square root of two, because each side is of length one. So we have to normalize the direction vector by calling the normalized method. This method is available for vector two objects and direction is one of them, so we can call it here. Now, if you play the game, it will still move about the same way. However, now you can be sure that the character moves at the same speed in all directions. Thank you kindly for watching this tutorial to the end. And remember, in the next one, we will work on the grid. See you then.